everyone it is national banjo day today I swear to god i didn't make this stuff up national banjo day today or yesterday i got it from the deering banjo website they're promoting it so i'm going with it and i'm going to do something today that uh excuse me while i put this down without knocking my microphone out um i am going to uh discuss my 10 favorite banjo players uh, show some records and stuff. We'll see how many you hang around for this video. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. First of all, I did a bluegrass video a couple of days ago, talking about my favorite bluegrass albums, and one of the my loyal viewers made a comment that I never mentioned any bluegrass musicians of color. Um. I don't really know any. He mentioned Rhiannon Giddens. So I want to give Rhiannon a big shout out and a lot of love. She's an amazing human being and a great musician, beautiful singer. And uh, I am absolutely a fan, but she's not a bluegrass artist. So um, I wanted to give her a shout out. If you're not familiar with Rhiannon, check her out. She's amazing. So let's get started here. Uh, I don't know how to rank these. These are all such amazing musicians. Um, I am going to start with a gentleman that I just became a fan over of over the last year, and he is definitely in my top ten. I just love this guy's playing. He plays with Billy Strings, and his name is Billy Failing. Uh, I got two Billy Strings albums, this one and this awesome one called Home. He's such an amazing player. I just love his... Uh, leads that he comes up with he's very inventive and um he's uh just i don't know how to describe it but just a really really fun guy to listen to billy failing i'm sure live watching him and billy strings play together must be amazing secondly number nine on my list doug dillard i talked about the dillards in my bluegrass video doug dillard was a great banjo player um, very inventive. Trying to learn his stuff for me was very difficult. He uh, was uh, very unique. And um, Dillard's Back Porch Bluegrass. Dillard's with Pickin' and Fiddlin' with Byron Berlin. Any Dillard's album with Doug Dillard on it is fantastic. Um, he had a song called Doug's Tune, if you want to look up that. I found that really challenging. Uh, next on my list is going to be Bill Keith. Bill Keith is one of my favorite banjo players. Bill Keith is, um, there's really two main, well, there's more, but I mean, really the, the banjo playing as we know it in bluegrass circles and that was the scrug style playing the three finger with the rolls and the little slides and stuff like that that's what earl perfected and brought to the forefront um bill keith invented a style called melodic playing where he used uh, melodic scales and melody notes and played uh, that way, and he, he developed a style that became very popular. He ended up being part of Bill Monroe's Bluegrass Voice for a while, put out his own albums. Bill Keith, this album is fantastic. Something old, something new grass, something borrowed, something bluegrass. Great album. Bill could pretty well do anything. Like on this album, he does a version of, uh, it starts off with the Rolling Stones' No Expectations. Fantastic version. And he does uh, Caravan, the Duke Ellington song. Fantastic. Um, Bill Keith was great. I got a chance to meet Bill when I did the, worked at the Mariposa Folk Festival. Thrilled to meet this man. He was such a nice guy. He's uh, left us too soon. And um, the amazing musician, Bill Keith. Next on my list will be uh, a female. Great banjo player and you know what's cool about these musicians is m they're all down to earth and great people i've had a chance to meet uh, a few of them and uh, just normal everyday people who happen to be very very talented you meet a lot of like i've met the odd 
person who's been successful in the rock world and they seem very narcissistic to me when I meet them. It's all about them. They want you to talk about them. They're not really interested in what you have to say or anything about you. And that's the opposite of what I find with uh, roots musicians, uh, bluegrass musicians, folk artists. They're just people, man. You want to talk to them, just say, hey, you know, I did this one. Oh, that's pretty cool. You know, they're, they're just interesting people, great people. But getting back to Alison Brown, uh, she was younger. She worked with Alison Krauss for a while, but she has her own quartet, uh, Alison Brown Quartet, which is kind of uh, jazz grass, I guess you would call it. Really interesting stuff. She's a great player. Allison's available for lessons if you want to take lessons from someone that she's, I mean, this is someone that accomplished, and you can get a hold of her and, uh, and take lessons from her, I believe. But uh, yeah, Allison Brown, fantastic musician. Next on my list, let's go with gentlemen from the Punch Brothers. Punch Brothers are a great band. This is an album they did uh, where they re-recorded uh, re -recorded all the songs off of Tony Rice's classic album, Hell on Church Street. Um, Noam Pekilny is the banjo player in this band. Great player, great musicians. And Noam also has his own solo albums out as well. And Noam's someone I think also you could probably uh, approach uh, or take video lessons off of, I'm thinking, or he has something thing but what a great player Noam Pekilny fantastic he also has a band right now which I showed that album called Mighty Poplar which they're touring right now and he's promoting so I didn't pull that album but I should have um, checked that one out too but Noam Pekilny just a fantastic player can play all the single string type stuff that's the other thing that kind of came out was um, Bela does a lot of it um, Tony Trishka did a lot of it he's going to be an honorable mention I guess uh, but they, they, you just play single string and you kind of uh, double pick with your your fingers. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm afraid I'm gonna pull my microphone out, which will not be good without picks on. Uh, you can't see it. Like that. Sorry, I don't have my picks on. Um, anyway, uh, another technique. Uh, Noam was fantastic at it. Uh, next on my list, I will have to go with this gentleman. He has the best tone of any banjo player I have ever known. His name is Jens Kruger. He can, now, the one thing about a banjo is it has no sustain. So when you think about a guy like B.B. King, who plays one note, and it seems like just emits so much passion, emotion whatever he can bb can say a lot with two or three notes uh on a banjo you can't do that as soon as you play a note it's gone it's the ding that's it so that's why you end up with roll patterns and stuff like that because you've got to keep everything going and jens kruger i don't know how he's managed it but he does get some sustain out of his banjo and it's beautiful he did an album himself which is absolutely gorgeous called the bridge uh fantastic musician the kruger brothers Jens and his brother, um, they also did like a, a suite, uh, it's, uh, how do you describe, it's not classical music, but it's a similar vein with just uh, guitar and banjo, it's absolutely beautiful, the suite, the Kruger Brothers are fantastic, Jens, the bridge, uh, there's a song called um, High Up in the Sky, which is absolutely gorgeous, you can check that out, um, next, who's left? I have knocked off everyone on my list. One, two. J.D. Crow would be next on my list. Behind Earl Scruggs, J.D. is probably the best, like, straight-ahead bluegrass banjo picker. And uh, J.D. Crow in the New South, this is the greatest bluegrass album ever. He also has a thing called the Bluegrass Band, where they do uh, covers of, like, a whole Flat and Scruggs thing or a whole Bill Monroe thing. Um, but uh, this is what a great album and JD's just an, a monster of a player uh, who would be left I've done Doug Dillard I've done Billy Failing I've done JD I've done Jens Kruger I've done Allison Brown I've done Noam Pekilny Bill Keith I'm down to the last three these are my favorites these are the most incredible 
Um, John Hartford. John is a unique man. There's Mark Twain, great album. John Hartford's Morning Bugle. Don't forget this is coming out on Record Store Day. Only 1,500 worldwide. I highly recommend you look for it. Um, and steam-powered aeroplane. Now, uh, John is a very unique player. John developed his own style of playing the banjo. John has a deep voice, and he would tune his banjo down to a low E, so it would be like an open G tuning, the way a banjo is typically tuned, but in the key of E. Um, for that to happen, John had to add a couple of frets. A banjo has 22 frets. He made his 24 frets, had a neck made, and um, it's very bassy, very deep, and um, you couldn't tune a regular banjo that low, and, and the strings would just fall off. Um, but um, John had this technique where he did this kind of double thumbing thing while he played the melody. He very distinctive player, and uh, it allowed him to play speed. Like he would play double time to a slow song. Like he, John, John's just an amazing musician. Guitar, fiddle, unbelievable musician. Uh, next. Number two has to be Earl Scruggs. He should be number one of all time, but my favorites, if I was saying who are the greatest, Earl is the guy. Earl Scruggs uh, and his brother, I think his name was Horace, they both played together when they were kids, Earl on the banjo, Horace on the guitar, and I always love this story. Uh, Earl's timing was just spot on, man. and. I heard the story that when they were kids, they would come out the front door of their house, cabin probably, or whatever it was, and Earl would go, they would start a song playing together. Earl would walk one way around the back of the house. His brother would walk the other way around the house, and then when they would meet up again in the back of the house, they would see if they were still in the same spot in the song. How's that for figuring out timing? Because timing is just everything in bluegrass music. And um, Earl... Eventually joined, uh, he, he didn't invent three-finger st style picking, but he made it popular. There was a couple other peoples in his region of the Carolinas that were doing it, but Earl took it and took it to another level and came up with all these incredible songs and uh, took off with the Foggy Mountain, or, or with uh, uh, the Bluegrass Boys and Bill Monroe and then Lester, who also became a member of that band, they ended up splitting up, going their own way, and forming the Foggy Mountain Boys, what I think is the greatest bluegrass band in the history of the planet. Um, there's uh, Earl Scruggs and The Ballad of Jed Clampett. I love these album covers. This one is so cool. Earl Scruggs. And the Foggy Mountain Boys, Columbia Harmony label. Very cool. There's Earl on his own. Doing Earl Scruggs doing just kind of famous banjo tunes. Some of them he uh, penned and some uh, like dueling banjos. He just did a version of it because it was popular. Um, great album. And then Earl joined his sons, Randy and Gary, came out in the Earl Scruggs Review, which was a country rock band. Uh, there's a lot of Earl Scruggs Reviews al albums, and I see these in the used bins for cheap all over the world. Grab them. They're great. If you like country rock, you should check these out. I got a chance to see the Earl Scruggs Review back in the 70s. Uh, fantastic. But I mean, they did, uh, they do on this, they did Third Rate Romance, you know that song, Third Rate Romance, Low Rent Rendezvous. And uh, Bob Dylan's song for Woody, they do on here. Hey Porter, the Johnny Cash song. They just did a lot of different stuff. And they did a great version of Country Comforts, the Elton John song. Um, yeah, just a great, great band. Great band, Earl Scruggs Review. Number one. The man who's inspired me since 1979 or whenever I first heard a note of his playing, Bela Flack. I, I don't know what to say about this man. He's the nicest guy on the planet, and Bela has taken a banjo so far outside the realm of bluegrass, it's not even, uh, it's just crazy. Um, what did I do with the CD that I wanted to show? 
I hope I didn't lose it. Bela's latest album is an absolute masterpiece. It is going to be my number one album of the year. There's nothing going to beat this thing already. It's only April, and I'm telling you, no one could put out an album as good as Rhapsody in Blue. It's absolute brilliance. It's just a masterpiece of an album. Uh, for some reason, the vinyl's not coming out till July. and uh, I don't get it, but anyway, I will be first in line when the vinyl comes out. What a great album cover. And uh, what a great album. It took Bela three years to come up with this. Three years of working steady on one project. That's Im incredible when you think about it. Uh, fantastic record. Uh, Bela has done everything. He's taken the world music, jazz, classical. Uh, here's a, an album he did with uh, Tumani Daibot, Daibot, or Daibot. African album. The ripple effect. Here's a classical album he wrote. The classical piece here, the Juno Concerto with the Colorado Symphony. Um, fantastic. He's done a couple. He's got a whole classical album that's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, with the flat tones, uh, he came up with a. Uh, uh, mixture of bluegrass, funk, and um, came up with this sound. It's just unbelievable. They've got, probably got a half a dozen or more albums out. Just a great band. That I wish they'd get back together. Every, they do every once in a while, but I would love to see them again. I've seen them so many times over the years. One, uh, Flight of the Cosmic Hippo, just a fantastic record. And, of course, the record that Baylor released just... Uh, a couple of years ago before Rhapsody in Blue is another favorite of mine, My Bluegrass Heart. This is absolutely an incredible instrumental album. Fantastic. Um, if you don't like bluegrass music, that doesn't mean uh, you can't appreciate this, the banjo taken in other areas. Like, give this album a try. I mean, it is fantastic. Rhapsody in Blue. Um, there's a lot of players doing a lot of cool stuff. And uh, all i got to say is happy banjo day. And thanks for watching, for those of you who do. Uh, give me thumbs. Give me some comments. Tell me you hate the banjo. Whatever you want to tell me. <laughs> I'm fine with it. Uh, take care.